So we have basically these, I'll just show you specifically right here, these 16 mic lines right here, um, which are wired directly to the studio downstairs. And then there are these two, and one of the things that I need to do that I haven't done yet, I apologize, is to actually label these so we can see what they are. But basically we have 16 mic lines that go from here to the studio downstairs and then two returns. And so those two returns are right here. Um, and those can be used for a couple of different things. What we use them for during sound bus sessions is to run the audio back up here that goes to a camera. So there's that way the audio gets embedded directly onto the camera signal for live stream. So that's probably a good workflow if the studio downstairs is being used for live streaming. It's all analog, there's no delays, you know, that have to be adjusted for, compensated for, and it, to have the audio just go directly onto a camera, you know, makes some sense. So I can show you how we can patch that from downstairs, but as far as the overall capability from in terms of connection, we have 16 lines going from here, two downstairs, and then two coming back up here. That's what we have at the moment. Can I ask a question? No. No, no questions are allowed. <laughs> the, because I saw downstairs, the, well, the white wires and those blue wires are, um, the, the blue wires I saw going into that, the audio remix. Are you talking about the, the, these blue wires? Yeah. The snake? Yeah, this is the actual snake cable gotcha. that right. goes down through the floor and pops out into yeah, the right, server right. room behind the studio. That makes sense. And um, so, the, yeah, these are the, yeah. the actual okay. ones that connect them. Okay. Cool. The, way, um, the way I have this set up right now is this, in this box, these are mic splitters. So what this allows you to do is to connect microphones into here. Then from the, the direct output of the splitter, it, it, it's a three-way splitter for each channel. It's set up right now to actually only use two of those splits. That's all we really need right now. Um, so it means you can plug in a microphone here and take the direct output into this, which is the mixer, which controls just the live sound up here in the studio. But then the, off the back of the splitter, that same microphone signal then can go downstairs to the studio. So what that allows you to do is, like for example, what I do during the sound post sessions on the last Saturday, I had eight inputs, eight microphone inputs essentially, up here on the stage. So each of those eight inputs came in here to the splitter, and then the direct output came here to the console so that I, I could mix the live sound. That didn't have anything to do with the recording at all. But those same eight mic signals went downstairs at the same time via the splitter, and it was you know patched in right here, um, so that it could be recorded at the same time. So that what it allows you to do is do uh, two totally separate mixes. One that's just for either recording or maybe for live streaming. Because right. again, that could come, that mix from downstairs could be brought back up here to go to a camera. Right. Um, so you, someone can be down there and mix whatever they want for um, uh, the live stream audio. While I'm doing a separate mix, doesn't have to be me, but in the case of Saturday, it was me <laughs> doing the mix for the live sound upstairs. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a good example of why you want to have, in general, different mix capabilities is that what I usually do is I connect two what I call room mics right here to these cables. And so the purpose of those mics is to really pick up the audience sound, you know, so that you hear the audience applause and so you get a more more of a sense that you're there in the space as opposed to just everything being close mic'd. But since those mics are way back here and the, the speaker's right there, 
I would never want to use those mics for amplification in the space because it would just be a feedback nightmare, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So the only reason to have those mics at all is to for the recording, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so um, that's just one ex specific example of why you want to be able to do a separate mix for video than what you're doing in the room. So this setup up here allows us to do that. So we were just talking about the patching upstairs and um, this is the panel here where those signals come into the studio. So there's, along here there are 16 of those uh, mic returns. In this case, they're coming this direction. And then here are the patch points for the two um, audio signals going back up to the studio. Um, so this can be all freely patched differently depending on the needs of a given production. Right? Mm. Those, and I think that those B and C, these video connections you see on here right now, these are not currently actually connected to anything, but they could be in the future. Mm -hmm. um, so what I usually do is keep this panel sort of in front of it just to help block a little bit of that noise that comes through this big opening. Because this right. room behind is a little bit noisy. Yeah. And uh, one of the things we might want to do still in the future is to improve kind of that mm -hmm. closure on the back to, because there, there is a bit of noise that comes in here, which isn't ideal. Yeah. at the moment. Um, so the, the studio itself is really based around this device right here, which is the Apollo interface. And so what this does is acts as an interface between the analog world or the, or the mic, mic signals or it could be a line level signal as well, coming from a keyboard or something like that, mm -hmm. any kind of audio signal. Um, but this is the device that gets it into the computer. Right, and so it looks like this is where all of those are obviously connected. This is where it's connected right now, and so I, what I thought we'd do today is do a little test recording in here, and we'll actually have to, um, this is still reconfigured from the way I had it on Saturday, and so we should probably put it back to more of a default configuration so it's a little easier to get, just record signals from here. But, so the power on procedure is to turn that on and turn the computer on. Um, I should say also that this other piece of gear here is an eight channel mic preamp that's connected digitally to the Apollo. So while the Apollo has a capacity for eight inputs, um, if you're doing a project that requires more than eight inputs, then we have this mic preamp too, which give, brings, to, brings us to a total of 16 possible simultaneous inputs, hmm. which is why we have 16 mic lines well, actually, the main reason we have 16 mic lanes coming from upstairs is because that's what the cable would hold. <laughs> but, um, so here you gotta enter the password to start, which is, should we tell everyone what the you password is? Password. It's password. Shh. <laughs> so there, um, so in the computer here, there are two, uh, probably two, pieces of software that are the most important ones to know about. Um, the first one is the Apollo console. So as I over here, you're going see it. It's this here. I'll open that. So the console is basically the digital mixer for the Apollo interface. And so I have all the inputs named here. Um, analog one through analog four. And then the way I had this set up is that the two inputs, which we'll look at in a minute, which are in the booth over there, 
We're coming into um, channels five and six of the Apollo, and then analog seven and eight. Those are all, this first set of eight inputs are the inputs directly on the Apollo. And then grace one through eight are the eight mic preamps on the, um, the M108, because it's a grace design M108. So that's why grace one through eight. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Yeah. So, um, on this, so on the Apollo console, it allows you to route in real time signals coming in to the Apollo to anything coming out. Um, Any questions so, so far? No. Mm -hmm. does, it make, does this make sense? Um, I guess, like, which one, the ones one through four correlate with, because there's eight that come down from the studio, yeah? There are 16 that come down from the studio. But which device they come into down here depends on how you patch them from the wall. Right, okay. Right, so you could, you could take channels one through eight and connect them directly to the Apollo if you wanted to. Gotcha, okay. Um, or you could take the bottom row and connect those to the Apollo if you want. Right, okay. So there's no strict numbering scheme per se between the inputs here and the inputs on the panel upstairs because you can it just depends on how they're patched yeah. at that panel over there right okay Does that no matter sense? what yeah. no matter what the primary ones have to go through the apollo yes okay i mean if you want to use the computer it has to go into the apollo okay i mean theoretically if you had your own recording device you could use just this preamp because it's just a mic preamp and it actually has a set of analog outputs which are not currently being used. So if someone came in and had their, for example, their own computer interface they wanted to use, because that's what they're familiar with using, or if they had their own little portable recorder but they wanted to be able to use um, the space upstairs and they wanted to maybe be able to use that mic preamp because that's a very high quality mic preamp that would be another option. And so someone could do a recording without using a computer at all. Hmm. That's possible. <clears throat> um, so the other piece of software, I'm gonna close this. I'll show you why I'm closing the moment. The other, probably the main piece of software to be aware of here is Luna. So Luna is a, a DAW or a digital audio workstation um, and it happens to be the one that is um, made by Universal Audio, which is the company that makes the Apollo interface. And, um, but it's really a full-featured uh, DAW. And I think we've also had some conversations about possibly adding some other DAWs um, to the computer as well, because it's just software that would still work with this as the interface. But uh, I've been using Luna as the, it's going to ask me to install an update, I'm going to say remind me later, uh, to do all the recordings. So <clears throat> um, maybe just as a place to start, let's open this session from last Saturday with Kevin Owen. So I can just show you what that looks like. And then maybe what we'll do is we'll start a new session from scratch as if you were going to start a new project. So these are all the tracks that were recorded from upstairs down in here. Um, just the one other thing you should show in the video here is that there's another switch here which turns on the speakers themselves. You know the speakers are on when the little blue lights are on. Wow. So um, now we have sound, right? Mm -hmm. Another important thing to know is that the volume control is right here for the monitors. Okay, stay focused on what So yeah, let's just back up a little bit. And there's no pleasing. So this is what we recorded last Saturday. Safe chasing the sun. So you can see here in the DAW that there's a separate track or separate line 
for each of the inputs we had. So we had a couple of vocal mics, we had a couple of guitar, we had a looper pedal, porch board, they, that was the one I was forgetting earlier. It was like a little kick drum mm. thing. Um, and then the keyboard. And then um, we have a track for the announcement mic that I use for the announcements at the top of the show. And then um, the room mics that I mentioned. Um, so in Luna, then you can you have two two basic views, and I'm probably not going to give an in depth discussion of how Luna works here. But the basic idea is that you can record and see the clips you're recording in this view, and then Command equals brings you to this view, which is uh, the mixer. So like here, no so if I want to decide. It's too many, with too much vocal, and I can bring the vocal down. So, and if I leave a sign behind me, will you try it again? Yeah, it sounds great, huh? Yes, yeah. Um, so wait, how did you change between those interfaces again? There's two basic views on Luna, which you do command equal to toggle between. You can also okay. come up here to view. Uh, and switch between oh. different views there as well. Okay. Hmm. So there's one of the things I like about Luna is that there's usually more than one way to do the same something. thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the more you use it, the more you kind of gravitate mm. towards some keyboard shortcuts. Mm -hmm. um, but I think maybe what we should do is um, set up a microphone in here and just start a, a Luna session from scratch just to kind of show that process and how that works. Sounds good. Another um, important thing to know about is there's this drive right here, um, which is an, S an external SSD drive, and um, it's called LPM Audio. You see on the, I think you, you may have seen it there. Um, this is the drive to use to actually record audio to um, and then the other place, the other reason that becomes important is that um, the it's fast enough so that when you're actually editing a project like with multiple tracks like that, the, the, the that drive has a fast enough read speed to be able to allow for editing. Um, whereas the internal drive, I found this out sort of the hard way initially. The internal drive doesn't have very much space on it. And um, I was doing a project, and um, it, 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 it basically, the hard drive filled up, and it wouldn't let me keep going Wow! until I had to go backwards and offload mm -hmm. some, some of the data to a different drive, and it was a big mess. So that's why you always want to make sure you're driving to, uh, recording to this drive. So this, um, let's just, uh, in this location here, if you click on this, this will show you where it's recording to. So here's LPM audio. So it's this drive here. So let's create a new folder called test session. Okay. So now it tells me the location is volumes LPM audio test session. And then I'm going to give a name to the session itself. So I'll call it just I'll just call that text. Got it? Yep. Yep. So now I'm going to say create. Okay, so now I have just an empty session mm -hmm. in Luna. So what I'm going to do is since I have that microphone plugged in to channel one on the Apollo, I'm going to first Create a new track here, like that. And then, so anytime you create a new track, you can decide which input you want that track mm -hmm. to look at, mm -hmm. right? And so in this case, I'm going to use just the first channel here. So that's all. That's all I have to do. Um, so on the Apollo now. Um, let's see. 
if you push in this knob, you'll see it'll cycle between the different inputs here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I can go to input one. Um, this microphone we have connected is a um, is a condenser mic, so that means it needs phantom power. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to turn phantom power on. If you cycle between, if you push the input button, you'll see it'll go between mic or line. Mm -hmm. So if you have a line level source, such as a keyboard, then you would set that to line. That's now mic level. And you would do that for each input that you have, correct? Correct, yeah. So then um, then what I need to do is turn the, um, turn the gain up. I forgot, I, one other thing I forgot to say is that you have to record enable the track like that so then you can start to see what's happening. So then notice here as I'm turning the knob to increase the amount of gain on that going to the microphone, you see that correspondingly happen here mm. in the channel view in Luna. Mm. So what's nice about that is that Luna has a very tight integration with the console. So you don't actually have to have the console app open at the same time as Luna. You can see it all within Luna, which mm. is actually really nice. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so if I do this command equals thing, we, that's, we're gonna we talk about that before going back and forth right. between the channel view and kind of the track view. And now already you can start to see the signal on that channel that we're getting. If you want to tap on that microphone, you can see. So actually that's probably too much preamp gain we have on there right now. So I'm going to dial that back a little bit. Did, uh, or talk into that microphone for us. I'd like to do something. Okay, so you can <laughs> see that. Okay. So, great. So let's record that. I'm going to go back to the track view. Now that I and I'm going to call this, I'm going to name the track, I'll just call it Vocal 1, because I don't know what else to call it. And I'm going to hit record. Oop. I'll do that little countdown before it starts recording. So now talk to us, tell us something interesting. LPMX, music mix for Longmont. <laughs> That was Sexy. fabulous. That was really, really good. Are so, you a voice actor? So now if I bring this up in our... LPMX, music mix for Longmont. Oof. LPMX, music mix for Longmont. Okay, good. I thought I heard something a little staticky, but I guess it wasn't. So we've just made made a recording. Yeah, yeah, we made us. a jingle. Woo! You keep that, seriously. <laughs> I need that for the station. <laughs> so now, you know, since we're now in the DAW environment, we have a clip which we can move around. We could shorten Ooh. that up. You know, we could. So it's like audacity. Dude. You could. We could fade. Put it. Fade it out. We could fade it in. We could split this, and you know, because we didn't like the way you did it. I mean, there's lots of things here. Music mix for Longmont. So you hear that fade. <laughs> Man, shivers, man. <laughs> um, so now, now that we've recorded that, Can let's. I ask how you switch between those controls of the fade in, fade out, or if you want to like cut something. There? Well, they, this is where we're going to get into, like actually working in Luna, and that's probably not. Okay. Too detailed. Got that's it. probably more. Well, first off, <laughs> I'm really not the best person at Luna. Okay. <laughs> I'm not the best. I mean, Zach, who's who's recording down here on Saturday, right. would be a much better person to tell you about mm -hmm. like how to actually work in Luna, because okay. um, he's better at it. He's way better at it than I am. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm just trying to kind of give a overview of kind of signal flow and how to move things around and how yeah. to make sound and capture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so right now, OBMX. this is. Uh, obviously coming through the speakers, right? But what if we wanted to um, 
send that, this recording to someone in the booth. On the, for the headphones, okay. So there's someone like if someone who's going to be in there and be listening. So if you if you're you in the channel that, like, view in Luna, you'll see that there. If you come down here, there are these Q outputs, which are separate from this main fader. This main fader is going to control what you're hearing out of the monitor speakers, right? So if I LPMX music mix for long long. So if I do that again, right, that, that fader is controlling what we're hearing here. But um, we have two sets of Q outputs here. So um, Q1, the way it's set up right now, which I think will probably be sort of our default setup, is that Q1 goes to these headphones right here. So maybe... Um, we're going to record something else and we don't want it to come through the speakers and so I'm going to mute my main outputs but I want to hear them in the headphones then I'm going to send that track to Q1 see if this works where did, where did my recording go okay so now I hear it in the headphones but you don't hear anything here right and so that mix is controlled here, Q1. What does the P mean? Here. Or P in it? Um, P means pre or post fader. So you oh. can set it up to be either um, to follow this fader level or to be independent of it. You might want to, there might be different situations you want to do that. So she's nodding her head, yes, yeah, so she's hearing something. Okay. Okay. Um, and Q2 goes to the sound booth. Q2 goes to the booth. So if someone wants to go into the booth and put those headphones on, then let's see if... Do you want to volunteer to do that, Jackson? I'm going to send that track. I'm going to bring the fader up in Q2, and let's see if he hears that in there. So what did you okay. actually do to send the track? Yeah. Just just turning that knob. Correct. Okay. Just turning this knob here. Cool. It was loud, but it was there. <laughs> and so if we want to come to the booth first, if you know what we can do is um, let's just set this little clip to play in a loop so we can hear it. I think we can do that. I think if we do that, it'll just yeah, repeat. It's, it's, yeah, there we go. Okay, so now let's go into the booth. So, here there's also a separate volume control here for the headphones. So if you guys want to put on the headphones and you can... So you can adjust the level for yourself. Okay, so that's... So let's take this one step further. So now let's say, okay, we're going to do... We want to record something on top of that clip, but we want to record it from in there. Well, we have that. We have a microphone set up there, which is connected to the Apollo input number two at the moment. That's how we have it connected mm -hmm. at the moment. So the first thing we want to do is come up here to tracks and create a new audio track. So let's say let's create one mono auto track and let's call it booth vocal okay so now we've got another track here called booth vocal and now we're going to come down to its input and set its input to number two because that's the physical input that that microphone is connected to right now right okay and now let's come back to our preamp 
and let's go over and select input number two. That's also a condenser mic in there, so it needs phantom power, so we'll turn phantom power on. It's already set to mic, mic level. Then if we turn the knob, we'll give it some gain. And if uh, someone want to go in there and uh, put on the headphones and talk to us and be our voice actor. Talk into the green mic? Yep. And close the door. When should she start? Talk to us. I can like barely hear her. Um, it's, oh, it's because we uh, we muted the. Uh... Keep talking. We I, I muted the main monitors, <laughs> but now we should hear. Her. <laughs> we hear. Her. Yeah. Talk to us. Uh, keep talking. <laughs> um, hello, this is Emily. It is okay. Tuesday afternoon. Okay, so well, my signal Colorado. is a little bit low on here, so I'm going to increase and it. And that's all I've got. Keep talking, keep talking. <laughs> la, 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 oh, la, la. That's really loud, so I turned up the mic preamp gain too much. This is where it, it's important to have good voice talent when you're recording. <laughs> um, okay, so put the headphones on. LPMX, music mix for Longmont. LPMX, music mix for Longmont. Actually, before we do that, um, so this is where what we don't have, let's see. What we don't have set up right now is the talk back. So she can't hear me very easily. Can you hear me, Emily? I can. Okay, so that does work. Okay, good. I hadn't actually tried to, been able to try this with anyone before, so this is good. Okay, so now you can hear me. Um, Where is that control? So over here, oh, there's talk. a there's talk back, and so if you just hold the talk button, the actual microphone is right here, okay. the Apollo. So when I'm talking now, she can't hear me, but when I push talk, then she hears me. Okay. Right. Um, okay, so Emily, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a little bit of your own vocal sound into the headphones, so you should hear yourself in the headphones. Tell me when you hear hear that. which means you have to talk again to us. Oh. Just talk, just talk. You don't have to say anything interesting. Oh, I thought I was just supposed to tell you when I hear it. No, just talk for us, because otherwise you won't hear anything. <laughs> you are the source. Um, okay. Hello, this is Emily McDonald. I'm LPM. Do you hear your own voice in the headphones? I do not. Oh, wait. Yes, I guess I do now. Okay. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I can hear myself. Would you like that to be a, a little louder or a little softer? A little louder. Okay, so we're going to send a little bit more to Q2. So, um, yeah, so we're just adjusting the, that Q, is good. the booth vocal. That's pretty loud. Okay, is that too loud? Should I back it off a little bit? Um, maybe just slightly. Okay, yeah, so just that down. Slight back off. But yeah. How about that now? Does that feel better? That is great. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play back the first clip, and um, why don't you just uh, so you should hear the clip in your headphones, and then just say something else. <laughs> <laughs> Argue <laughs> with myself. <laughs> So now I'm going to record, but the only track that I have record enabled is her track. Right. Hmm. Oh. Sorry, I don't know why it's so LPMX, music mix for Longmont. 
LPMX. Music mix for Longmont. LPMX. Music mix for Longmont. Oh, so I'm not actually hearing myself. Oh. LPMX. Hey. Music mix for Longmont. What's going on, Andrew? Nothing. <laughs> LPMX. <laughs> music mix for huh? Longmont. This might be kind of confusing the way you do this. We're doing an orientation right now. Um, you want me to be a guest? <laughs> yeah, you say. <laughs> did, that, did that make sense at all? Theoretically, yes. Theoretically, yes. Uh, This, I mean, I think this experiment yeah, would sure. be better if there was something more sensible for you to record over. Yeah, yeah. It makes sense that I would be, you know, music. Right. But does that kind of give you guys the idea of yeah. mm -hmm. how to, so basically what, we, what we've done is we've recorded, um, well, actually, we didn't actually record her. Can we just record you saying, uh, can we record you saying something real quick? Because we didn't actually record that. Can you go make sure the door's closed or something? Upstairs? Yeah. Yeah. So whenever you're ready, just say something in, into the microphone for us. Okay. Hi, this is Emily McDonald from LPM. It is Tuesday afternoon. Great, that was a perfect take. <laughs> so now we can. Hi, this is Emily McDonald from Wow. Sounds so good. Sounds amazing, doesn't it? Fuck. So, Emily, are you hearing that take in your headphones? Oh. Did you hear that in mm -hmm. the, in the yes, headphones, Emily? Oh. I I did. Yes. Okay. Are you wanting me to talk over it? No, I hear it? no, no, no. I just wanted to make sure you could. I just wanted to make sure you could hear it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I could. So that's the. I think that's the basic workflow, for for recording, sourcing, and recording in here.